What's up, everybody? James Duggan with IGN here at BlizzCon 2017 with Tom Marks, Hello. our PC editor. How's it going? It's going good. I'm excited, man. Yeah, so the opening ceremony just wrapped up, and I'm pulsing with excitement. There were so many awesome announcements, so let's count down the four best, uh, or the four biggest, and I think we should start with StarCraft II going free-to-play. Yeah, really unexpected if you... You can, anybody can play the StarCraft II Wings of Liberty set for free. If you have Wings of Liberty already, you get Heart of the Swarm for free as well. Uh, that includes the ranked ladder, it includes all the co-op missions, it, it includes everything for free now. Uh, it's a kind of an interesting expansion on what they had already, which was the arcade mode and the custom games being free, but yeah, really kind of out of left field and, and pretty cool. Sure, ranked ladder being free is huge, and I yeah. think this kind of sets up and hopefully gets some people into the game to experience what's next for the IP. Obviously not a huge announcement coming out of StarCraft. No, yeah, there, there wasn't any like big new content reveal besides like I think one co-op mission or a set of co-op missions. You know, it, it, yeah, it, it's not that big year for StarCraft, I don't think. And this is a cool way to, to give the fans of it some something in the sure. in between. But it was a huge year for Hearthstone. Yes. Uh, Kobolds and Catacombs is, yeah. the, is the new expansion coming out. Uh, an expansion is pretty much a guarantee for BlizzCon, but what was so cool about this one was uh, expressly the dungeon run mode, which yeah. is kind of a randomized boss deck. There's a lot of tabletop games that are kind of like that. Um, yeah, Pathfinder, the adventure card game, for example. But Also, if you're just coming back to Hearthstone, this is a big problem with the game. If you haven't been keeping up with it, you have two sets worth of, or more, like two adventures, one expansion, worth of cards to craft and figure out and research tier lists for decks and things like that to get back into the just the ladder just the quick play ladder there's a lot of work involved in that so as somebody who hasn't played in a couple expansions i can come back with my classic cards and go straight into this dungeon run mode and have a good time and do it more than once which is yeah. the best part of that and it's free which is great too you know people were kind of worried after they announced it like oh how much gold is this going to cost me but it's it's a free mode you can just keep playing it which is really really nice sure absolutely let's talk about overwatch uh i could have predicted every single thing they announced. I mean, Pretty not much. this specific hero, but new hero, new map, yep. uh, and new cinematic. But man, did they knock it out of the park with all three of those things. They new hero Moira, I think we should start with, who's kind of yeah. like a, a shadow priest in Yeah, in it's, it definitely got that vibe, right? Like a Talon operative is her backstory. She can deal damage and heal people. Her ultimate is actually really cool. It's this like giant laser beam that does both. It, it'll shred through enemies or rapidly heal up allies. I'm a, a support main in almost every game I play, so like this is a this is a really, really exciting character for me. I'm I can't wait to get my hands on her later today. Sure. Also Blizzard Land yes. was insane. <laughs> I want that in real life, may I say. And you mentioned well, us yeah. Snacks Aramis is a thing. Yeah, Snacks Aramis was one Brilliant. of like, the little shops in there. It's that's gonna be a great level to just like find all the Easter eggs in for sure. Absolutely. Um, and it's funny too, because like this is a level that the Overwatch developers had joked about for, I think, two years now. They'd been like, we played with the idea of a Blizzard theme park. We're not going to do it. And now they're doing it. So that's, that's really Absolutely. fun. And then the cinematic, I also think, stole the show, which was, was uh, yeah, the history really cool. of, of Reinhardt in Eichenwald and uh, his crusader mentor, kind of the, the Uther to his Arthas, um, talking him through a battle. And uh, it was an interesting look at Reinhardt, because I don't think he's an overly developed character the way that maybe Sombra might be yeah. uh, or Tracer. but. You know, I, it was interesting to peer into the, uh, the bulwark, no pun intended, of Reinhardt and see his history. And also, the fidelity was amazing. We need a CGI movie one of these days. You know? one, one day. It, it's got to happen eventually. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed the, the short as well. All right, so the number one biggest announcement uh, per IGN.com and per me uh, has to be World of Warcraft Classic Servers. You were, like, shaking in your seat for this Dude, one, I was, I was. I got a little emotional. I, I, I will be honest with you. I think that it, it harkens back to a time, and obviously there's an amount of rose-tinted goggles and nostalgia going on with this. Of course. But all, like, uh, after thinking about it long and hard, uh, with Nostalrius and Elysium and all these servers going up and going back and playing those myself, there is an experience that is not available in today's World of Warcraft mm -hmm. because of things like flying mounts, because of, of the way the progression works. Uh, it's become a Diablo 3-esque, and it's like adventure, open world, progression, and then obviously when you queue into a dungeon and a raid, those are very disparate from the overworld. So going back to this unified server, this unified world where it really feels like an MMO world that's not just a, a, a theme park ride. Yeah, There's and a it, lot of immersions going on. And it's, it's surprising too, just because this is something Blizzard has said for a while that they didn't think they were going to do at all, and they said, you know, it's totally not possible technically and all these other things, and like, now they've committed to it, they're doing it, which is which is great to see. It leaves a lot of questions though. Oh, we, know, we know for sure that they're not doing like cross-server realms, right? And they're not doing the dungeon finder stuff. 
um, but we don't know all the details. And I think uh, a key part of this is, I don't know if Blizzard knows all the details yet too, because sure. they're hiring right now for a team that will help develop this. So they're, they might not know exactly how this will look eventually too. We just know it is coming. Sure, and it seems like a very altruistic effort. You know, they're going yeah. in, uh, one thing that I read was that the realms will be self-contained. There will not be cross-realm functionality, yeah, exactly. which was a big divisive point. Again, when you see that person in high warlord gear, you know, you want to aspire to that. The fact that he exists on your realm and you can always find him in the world is very cool. But like you said, a lot of questions. Will there be the classic um, fidelity and will we have the amenities that we're used to, the mm -hmm. quality of life things? Going back and playing on those old vanilla servers is rough in terms right. of its moment to moment gameplay compared to current WoW. So I have a bunch of questions and actually I have an interview with JL and Brack coming right up, so you can go to IGN.com for that. Tom, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, man. Uh, and everybody at home, keep it right here on IGN for all things BlizzCon.